know, I just don't, <laughs> I just don't love my bangs today. It's like, one of those, you get those days every once in a while where like your bangs just don't do what you want them to do and it just looks weird. And I feel like today is one of those days. It's just not, I don't know, I don't know. It just doesn't look right to me. Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Heart house. My name is Alicia D-Heart <laughs> and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. So welcome. Today is May 1st of 2022, which means April is officially over. Which is kind of sad because the month of April was pretty fun. <laughs> Uh, but before I get into that, I am coming to you from my home in Washington State of the United States. I live in the greater Seattle area of Washington, which is super fun. Uh, and so, yeah, this month in April we saw warm, sunny summer weather where it got up into the 70s degrees Fahrenheit. We also saw frosty weather where it dipped below freezing, so it's definitely the spring time of year where everything is just oscillating, trying to figure out where to settle for the summer. Uh, I've got lots of things going on in the garden with new plants and old plants and um, the compost bin has actually gotten up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> um, so lots of stuff going in going on in the in the garden. Um, and we haven't gone camping yet because like I said the weather's been kind of all over and we like to camp in a tent so I'm sorry, but I'm just not going to camp when it's freezing. <laughs> I like cold weather, but not freezing while I'm sleeping. Um, so no camping yet, but I'm sure that will be coming soon. Uh, we have been getting out walking pretty regularly with Marjorie around our neighborhood. Um, and we even went to uh, the Washington State Fair for the spring fair to a fiber festival. Oh my gosh, you guys, a fiber festival, like a real live one in person where you can go touch all the things. Yeah, that was super fun. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, other than that, there's the usual, um, I'm looking down at my projects. Uh, I have some knitting progress to share with you. I have a pattern release update for you. I have some spinning, uh, some new things I brought home from the Fiber Festival to talk about. I think that's pretty much it as I look around this room. <laughs> um, so let's get started with that. Uh, before I get too far into the episode, just a reminder that in these monthly makes videos, uh, I do give away something each of these episodes. Uh, I'm going to continue with the track of giving away a, uh, a pattern off of Ravelry of your choosing. So it'll be a digital delivery, a digital download. We won't have to worry about... Um, international postage or even domestic postage or even um as as much as i like going and touching all the physical items uh, i'm not going to be uh, accidentally delivering germs to your doorstep so it'll be uh, an electronic giveaway where uh, you get to pick out a pattern off of revelry and i will purchase it for you so uh, yeah, more about that later in the episode. Just want to give folks a heads up that that's something I do every month. So I think I'm going to start with the pattern release update announcement. 
I don't know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, just so I can get these sock blockers off my lap. Um, but my newest uh, pattern design, uh, this sock pattern, uh, I finally decided on a name and I went with Saginaw. So these are my Saginaw socks. No, I'm not showing you a matching pair. <laughs> um, but I knit this pattern uh, twice. I still need to complete the second socks for these, but uh, I wanted to be able to showcase uh, different color variations. So and I think the green and gray shows up a little bit better on screen just so folks can see the details. Um, but yeah, my testers went through the pattern and combed all the details and thank God for my test knitters because without you, yeah. So, <laughs> so big thank you to my test knitters um, who completed this, uh, this knit for me. So they are each going to get a finalized copy of the pattern as well as one to give away to a friend. So uh, thank you again for test knitting for me. And uh, if any of you out there are interested in test knitting for me in the future, um, keep keep me in your, your uh, subscribe list here and stay tuned for updates on uh, more patterns to test knit for me. Because uh, I'll have more coming down the pipeline here soon. But uh, a little break after just doing one is, is probably a good idea to um, help keep me from burning out. So big shout out to my test knitters. I really appreciate you. You did a fantastic job. So to continue with the knitting, I think I'll show you all my knitting. This will be the knitting section. Uh, this is something you've seen before as well. This is my... Um, here we go. Uh, Mellow by Camilla Vaud. It's a beautiful cardigan sweater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been working on this a while. I know. It's still in progress. But I did make a bit of progress on the first sleeve. I did want to have this finished for you, but it's not. I think last time I showed it to you it was somewhere down here. So I did make a bit of progress on it, but um, I got totally sidetracked by um, other knitting as well as spinning. And I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. So, uh, but yeah, I've made it to the increases in the sleeve. So it's starting to get wider. And so this is the cuff here of the sleeve. I just kind of, so I will have to sew it later, but you can see it's, I mean, it's almost there. Look how close that is here. Um, yep. And yep, yeah, this is the first sleeve, so I'd still, I still have to uh, knit the second one as well, uh, but it is coming along. So I'm using a uh, Knit Picks palette in Ash and Mist. I don't know why I can't remember Mist. Ash and Mist, and then I also have a um, silk blend yarn in here. I don't know where that tag is. Probably in the very bottom of this bag. Yeah, like right there. 45% um, silk, 55% merino. And it's a lace weight yarn. Um, but yeah, so I've made um, yarn substitutions because the pattern calls for mohair. Um, three, well, two different types of mohair yarn, mohair blends. And I didn't have any of those in my stash. I didn't feel like purchasing them 
online um, without being able to feel mohair. Uh, I do have allergies to quite a few different animals and I just would like to know if uh, mohair is going to be an okay fiber for me or not. So I just went with fibers that I know I'm okay with. Uh, merino silk and the Nipix palette is what it what is that it's another wool uh highland wool which i i love so so i did make um yarn substitutions using things out of my stash and again i'm just not entirely sure about mohair just yet for for me i just need to try it out but i didn't want to <laughs> try it out on like a whole sweater all the way in on mohair i'm just so the thing that I made the most progress with is a new baby blanket design <laughs> because um, inspiration struck. Oh, that's right. I was going to show you the blanket I showed you last time. Hang on. Because technically, I did finish this in April. So I do have a finished object for April, and that is a baby blanket. Still haven't washed it or woven the ends. <laughs> because why would I do that? Uh, but yeah, this is made out of um, Mandela, so Lion Brand Mandela. And it's two skeins of two different colorways, uh, but I purchased them uh, to go together. And this is their worsted weight uh, variety, which is super adorable. But I think I do prefer the, um, the lighter weight, the size three. That's more like a, a DK or a sport weight. Uh, but yeah, this is a finished object. So this is a corner to corner um, knit baby blanket. And I'm striping the colors in various ways throughout here. And it's pretty fun. So I cast on another one and I'm creating um, a tutorial video to go with the pattern. So I'm recording myself um, knitting the various sections of um, this stitch pattern uh, on an increase and then the same stitch pattern on the decrease side. Same thing with the other stitch pattern, um, showing you about the, the swapping colors for the striping. Right, so I'm filming um, that video as I go through the project. So I'm, I've got a bunch of Lion Brand Mandala in my stash. You can see some more up here. Uh, I just, you know, get it when it's on sale at Joann's. Um, it's been in the clearance section actually quite a bit. Or if there's a coupon to get an item 50% off, I'll go in and grab one. And I just, you know, kind of have been collecting them in my stash. Um, so this blanket I'm using, uh, Dragon, which has these blues, greens, and browns. It's very Pacific Northwest in my opinion. And the other color is Serpent, which has yellow, gray, and a little bit of brown here. And yellow is my favorite color. And then put yellow and blue together. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's just... I grew up in Michigan. Uh, I was a U of M fan as a kid. And then I went to Montana State University. And their colors are blue and gold with a big M. So anyway, I reminisce. But... I wasn't sure how the colors would work out. I'm never sure. And they look amazing. Like always. So, apologize if you heard that. My knitting needle hit the camera stand. Um, yeah, so I'm 
almost out of yarn of the two skeins. <laughs> Uh, but I had to pause right here because I'm to a section where I need to record uh, my next little tutorial bit. But um, yeah, this thing is coming along. Let me see if I can get up and show you. How to hold, how do I hold all of this? All right, so there are the stripes of colors there. It's so pretty. And here's one of the corners here. I just love it. It's so great. Um, yeah, I'm using the same size needles that I used on the worsted weight blanket. I thought I went up a needle size for the worsted weight, but I did not. So that would definitely contribute to that blanket being smaller. Um, but yeah, I just get a, a bigger blanket out of the sport weight and it's lighter you know because the yarn's not as thick and the colors um are solid as opposed to the more um speckled variegated tonal i think maybe is more the word but it's, it's not completely saturated with color. There's still white bits in there. So um, each of these is, you know, it's like primarily that purple, but it, because it's got those flecks of white in it, it, it looks like it has a lot more texture to it, which is super cool. But I, I don't know, I like this more, so. Anyway, so I've obviously put a lot of time and energy into this project this month. I did wait to cast it on until April. <laughs> uh, so, and I thought I was going to have it finished for you today, but I don't, and that is totally okay. So this'll be an FO next month, I imagine. And then, I will, um, those are the patterns. See those colors? It's just so great. And then, <laughs> uh, I also started a, another sock. Uh, and I just wanted a, well, I was going to do a pattern. Um, I was going to start another pattern idea. And this is, let me show you the yarn label first. This is Moonwalk by Hobby. I think it's supposed to be a Michael Jackson reference here with the shoes. Uh, but it's 74% wool, 24% polyamide, and 2% polyester. And it was advertised on their website as a sock yarn. Um, so it is fingering weight. And it's got that sparkle in it. That's that 2% polyester. Uh, so here's what it looks like in the ball. Oh yeah, can you see that sparkle? Mm -hmm. So you can tell in the ball that it has striping going on, right? You can see that tan, teal, like a dark section. Like you can see the striping, right? Okay. But it still just looks not striping as well in the ball. Like when I first looked at it, it did not seem like it was going to be a striping yarn. But you can see it. So I started off with this pattern with these faux cables and whatever. It just did not read at all in this yarn. It just looked like a hot mess. So I ripped it out. 
and I just decided to do a plain stockinette sock and I think it was a good call because if I couldn't tell it was a self-striping ball of yarn before I should be able to tell now so yes it's definitely got um striping going on here so it looks pretty nice here uh I would love to see this yarn actually in a weaving project Oh, you'd still get the stripes though. Just thinking about how to use it in a way where you wouldn't see the stripes, but you would you would definitely see the stripes in weaving. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's just a plain um, stockinette stitch sock. I did twisted rib at the top, um, either 15 or 20 rounds. I can't remember. I could count it, but I won't until later. Uh, I'm going to do a short row heel, which I haven't done in a while. <laughs> uh, but at the time I cast this on, I was wearing a pair of socks that I did a short row heel on that I also made a little gusset for. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do that in these socks because they fit really well. So I'm doing a little bit of a, of a gusset and then going to do my short row heel and then decrease off so there'll be also a little bit of a gusset on the other side so what i'm doing is on the back side of the sock which is what will go under the foot around the heel is i've added four stitches to my sock so i i increased one stitch one stitch then knit a plain row, increase one stitch, one stitch, knit a plain row. Um, so I've added a little bit of extra space. Then I'll do the short row heel. Then I'll decrease off those extra four stitches the same way I added them in. And so it just adds that little bit of extra room that's really nice about having a heel flap and gusset, right? <laughs> but without the whole heel flap and gusset. So. Um, yeah, so I think it will look um, really nice in the end. Okay, so this is kind of a knitting and spinning thing. So this goes perfectly here as my transition piece. Um, but I uh, spun this yarn to create the Librarian Vest by Skein Deer Knits. And so I started knitting a sample swatch <laughs> to test my gauge. And so the first bit here was with the recommended needle size in the pattern and it's too large. So I went down a needle size and it's still too large. The next needle size down is what I'm using in the baby blanket. And that's the only needle I have in that size is that one right there. So, <laughs> so I did start swatching for it. And I think it is within the realm of possibility to get down to the recommended gauge. But... I do think my yarn is more on the worsted side rather than the sport weight DK weight side. So uh, I'm not sure how dense that fabric is going to feel, which again is the point of swatching. Uh, so I don't know, but after I finish the baby blanket, and that needle is free then I can try that size and of course I can always go down another size and and just keep trying until I hopefully get gauge and then I can see what the fabric feels like um I, I do think this this first section I tried here like it it's loose 
and I don't think I would like that in a pretty uh, snug vest because uh, I wouldn't want it to be like stretching and then looking all holy. I think it would want it to be a little more put together. So yeah, so we'll see. But I think the lighting is, is not cooperating with the window being behind me instead of in front of me. And the camera's not wanting to focus, but it looks pretty cool. I have to say it looks pretty cool. Uh, I definitely, uh, I still have more fiber over there to spin up. So oh, I hate doing this, but if I'm going to continue with this whole trajectory, because of course I have doubts now because it, it didn't work out on the first two tries. So now I have all kinds of doubt that this isn't going to work, that all of this was a waste because it's too thick of a yarn, that I certainly don't have enough fiber prepped up. I'm going to have to wash and dye more. It's just starting to sound like a lot of work. So this is where I start going, oh, do I really want this or should I just do something else? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying not to lose steam on ideas that I have because this does look so cool and I have plenty more Carrie Hill fiber that I can wash and dye up and spin and it's not a big deal. It's just a matter of like, I think once I get a good swatch and I get that good yarn sample so I can consistently try to spin towards it, that's gonna be the ticket. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it, this is the yarn that I want. I think I want it to be thinner. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. This can be something else. It's not like I wasted a whole bunch of fiber or anything. So it will be fine. But uh, but yeah, that um, librarian vest is nowhere near ready to start. Um, because I'm uh, nowhere near finished with the spin. So speaking of spinning, <laughs> and thinking of sp speaking of spinning long-term projects, <laughs> yeah, um, I finished another skein of this uh, gorgeous green color that I have been working on on my Turkish drop spindle for what two years now a year a year okay <laughs> uh but yeah I spun these two previously and I did make little labels for them so this one was spun between March and July of 21 this was July to September of 21. Okay. And they're beautiful, awesome fingering weight, two ply. And then this, I started right away in September and then I just finished here in April. And I just wanna point out <laughs> uh, that this one does look different than these two, right? I don't know if you can tell, but the two over here are more of a fingering weight yarn than this one is. This one is thicker. So this is something that I think I need to work on, and that is not letting my spinning projects sit and linger. And I forget that muscle memory of what I was doing I also had issues with trying to remember, am I spinning clockwise or counterclockwise? I can't remember. Yeah. And this is what happens if you can't remember is you get a different yarn. And I really don't want that to be an issue, for example, in a garment like the library invest. So anyway, um, yeah, so that is three of the four ounces of this green color right here all spun up and I think I'm gonna stop there 
Um, I think I'm going to save that last ounce for um, the possibility of blending with other fibers. And also, I think I'm just going to wait. Instead of putting it on the spindle right away uh, and then letting it sit for a long time, um, I could just wait. So I did write down on this most recent tag that I was spinning it uh, S direction, which is counterclockwise. So I spun the entire singles counterclockwise. Um, and I wrapped it on the Turkish drop spindle and it took off the turtle and I plied it back on itself. So I took from the outside of the ball and the inside of the ball and I plied it on itself. And that's what I did for all three of these. Okay. Uh, but this time I finally wrote down S spin <laughs> because I didn't write that on the other tags and I couldn't remember for the life of me. So let's say two months from now, I really want to make this a full four ounces and I want to spin that last ounce on the Turkish drop spindle and I want it to be consistent with this, then I at least have some notes. Um, but yeah. So I did finish that, which means, oh, see, I didn't calculate yardage on the baby blanket. Uh, but this means, 91 yards has entered my stash now. So, yay. So I've removed 30 grams of fiber and I've added 91 grams of yarn, which is super fun. So after I cleared my Turkish drop spindle and I was thinking, okay, enough of this green, like it's beautiful and I love it. It's very springy, fresh, new, like green leaf kind of color. Um, I really wanted to have something with more color variation. So I went to my stash and I found this um, merino that I had ordered from Wound Up Fiber Arts and the colorway is Moonwalk. Maybe that's better. Uh, but it's 100% super wash merino. This is 19.5 micron. It's very soft in my opinion. Uh, I did weigh the braid. It was 116 grams. And I was getting ready to put it on my Turkish drop spindle because I just cleared it off. And I was like, oh, this is going to be so fun to spin a colorful one on my drop spindle. And then Michael, my husband, was like, why don't you do it on your spinning wheel? I haven't seen you use your spinning wheel in a while. I was like, yeah, okay, okay. So I spun it on my spinning wheel, and which is so much faster than the drop spindle. Am I right? Uh, so I spun up all 116 grams right here. Uh, on these two bobbins. So I have two singles here. And uh, so I split it in half. So half the fibers here, half the fibers here. And then what I need to do is ply these two together. Uh, but uh, yeah, I finished spinning the second bobbin yesterday. And I decided since this one's had a couple days to sit and rest, I should give this one at least 24 hours to sit and rest before applying. Um, I have not tried, uh, and I'm not going to try this time, um, rewinding these onto different bobbins before spinning, be sorry, before applying. Uh, part of the reason I have not done that, big part, is because I, I only have what, four bobbins? I have, I have a fifth one, but this fifth one um, did not fit. Uh, I've used it before, it has a leader on it, but uh, when I tried putting this on the wheel, it was not going on like as if the wood had expanded or something. 
I don't understand. I can see through the hole just fine. It's not like there's anything blocking the way, but it wouldn't even go on the flyer. So, so I have four bobbins. <laughs> I don't know. Um, by the way, I bought, so I have an Ashford traditional spinning wheel that I bought at a flea market and the lady I purchased it from, I believe was not the user of the wheel. She, she, um, I think got it in like a, a storage unit, like she buys storage units and then resells things. Um, so she didn't know anything about it. It was definitely used. Um, the treadle has, um, chew marks on one of the corners. This bobbin has chew marks. So I think this is in a home with um, um, a kitten, a puppy. I don't really know much about cats because I don't have cats. I'm actually allergic to cats. <laughs> but I, I do have a dog and I've had dogs in my life. So this looks like something Marjorie would have done, puppy Marjorie would have done. But uh, I mean, it does not decrease the functionality of things. It's fine. Anyway, so um, yeah, I'm just going to ply them straight from these bobbins that they were spun onto originally, and I don't have a problem with it. Would I be okay with trying the method of putting these on different bobbins first before plying? Sure. Um, I've read about it and people seem to think it makes a difference like a positive um, difference in the yarn but uh, I just don't feel like buying more bobbins at the moment so it's fine but anyway so this is going to get plied maybe later today or the next day um, I'll definitely be working on it sooner rather than later right okay <laughs> So I have a closet full of wool and I love wool. It's awesome. Uh, I love learning more about uh, where our fiber and yarn comes from and how we can create different types of fabric out of them. It's just a super deep and wide topic that's um, intertwined with history and culture and it's it's just so fun and fascinating and I'm a math professor there's lots of math in there and I just find it really fun anyway <laughs> on a tangent um, my mom sent me some cotton in the mail like cotton legit from a plant like still on branches they just put them in a box and mail them to me and said hey can you do something with this and I was like I don't know but I'm gonna try <laughs> so, so I started playing with that yesterday um, when I rearranged my craft room a few weeks ago uh, that was one of the boxes I found and I was like, what is in this random box? Oh yeah, that cotton my mom sent me. So I am not nearly through what she sent me, <laughs> but, uh, but I have some cotton poonies here. So I pulled the fiber off the seeds and you can see it is definitely a white cotton that she sent me. And um, I didn't do any washing. Uh, you can probably see some specks here. I did not get all the debris out when carding and stuff, um, which I want to try to be a little bit better about. But I think I did a pretty good job, all things considered, especially since I don't have... I don't have hand carters that are specifically for cotton that have that really high TPI count, Tynes Bridge. Uh, I'm just using the ones I use, excuse me, for everything else, for wool. I just, I, I don't see the need to have, you know, five different versions of one tool unless I need it. 
So if I can make do with what I have, I'm going to and deal with it. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, so these are tiny little uh, Rolex off of my hand carters. And uh, I spun up, oh, there's my little sample over there. I took two of these little things, just two of them, and I, I did a trial spin. Like, okay, I got, okay, I think I got the whole pulling the fiber off the seed down. I've got the whole um, carting them process down and, and rolling them off into these little poonies. Okay, okay, I've got a feel for that, great. So then it was, okay, how difficult is this gonna be to spin? So I wanted to like test out all these different stages <laughs> whilst knowing how they would fit in the whole process, right? Because if I had, I don't know, um, twisted these too tightly and the looser ones were easier to spin, then I'd wanna keep that in mind. If the looser ones just like fell apart and were a mess, and the tighter ones were better, well, then I want to know that for the rest of the fiber that I'm working with, right? So, so I did a bit, took a pause to spin a couple of them. I took a tightly wound one and a loosely wound one so I could compare how they felt. They both felt fine. Um, honestly, the, the looser one was easier to draft uh, more consistently than the tighter one, so I am going to keep that in mind. But uh, all in all, I think my sample looks pretty nice. I left it on the table over there. Let me grab it. So uh, it's just a tiny amount. Um, and it's so cute. So this is cotton. This is 100% cotton, just a tiny little sample. And I was going for a fingering weight yarn. I forgot to check if I actually achieved that goal. Let's just see. I'd say on average it's a fingering. I think it goes between um, lace fingering and sport, honestly. Between some of these, um, I have some bigger, fatter sections. But anyway, uh, yeah, I didn't know that <laughs> after you spin cotton, you literally put it in boiling water. You would not do that with wool. <laughs> was like what are you joking no yeah you put it in boiling water okay and yeah this thing looks amazing <laughs> so uh I'm pretty excited so here's what I'm thinking I want to do for this I would love to of course work up all of this cotton my mom sent me and process it all up into the little poonies. I spun this on my spinning wheel and videos I've watched about spinning cotton, they're like, oh, you need like the, you know, tools that can, they're like made for spinning cotton because you have to put so much twist into it. And I did it on my Ashford traditional, I think without a problem. I mean, this looks fine to me, but then I'm not like a cotton master spinner. So I don't know if you are and you see problems, I guess, let me know. <laughs> but, you know, there are some sections here that, that look like they don't have much twist to them. And I can't, I cannot rip this thing apart. Um, it is holding strong, which is great. So what I'd like to do is um, spin it all up, go for like a fingering weight yarn, and I'd like to weave some towels and then gift them back to my mom. And I think that would be really special. So 
that's my plan. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want to weave towels for myself, but <laughs> I'm trying not to be greedy. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm pretty dang excited. Uh, I live in the city and there's no way I could have sheep, but I'm pretty sure I could grow cotton in my backyard with my garden. Now, yes, I'm in Washington and I watched a whole video yesterday about growing cotton and I know it's not nearly warm enough up here as I would need for cotton, but you know what? I can have a cotton farm inside my house. <laughs> We don't have air conditioning. It gets hot in here in the summer. I think we'd be fine. Anyway, I'm rambling on, but this was super fun. So I see spinning cotton in my future and it's going to be a great time. So that's pretty much for April. I've got a finished blanket, a finished little spin. I'm almost done with another spin. I'm almost done with a blanket. Uh, went to a fiber festival, started processing cotton for the first time. It was a good month. <laughs> so I think it's time for the giveaway for this episode. So um, from the March, yeah, last month was March. So from the March makes a video, uh, I asked you to write a comment. And so I'm going to draw a winner, a winner at random from the comments on the March Makes video. And that person is going to win a pattern, uh, which I will purchase for you off of Ravelry. So it's something you can um, pick out. So any pattern that's 10 US dollars or less, uh, and I will purchase it as a gift for you on Ravelry. And uh, if you are the winner, all you have to do is let me know which pattern you would like, either by sending me a Ravelry message or an email. Put my email address on there. Or an Instagram message. Yeah. <laughs> so down below, I have a link to my link tree which has my Ravelry, Instagram, YouTube, everything is linked there. Um, but assuming you're a Ravelry user, you're probably gonna go to Ravelry, pick out a pattern, and then you can just send me a message from in there. Um, so my username is knits 2 on Ravelry, uh, and you can follow me or not, but at least send me a message and let me know which pattern you would like. Okay. So I am going to draw the random winner and I'm gonna put their name on the screen here, do some editing. <laughs> and so, <laughs> congratulations, winner. <laughs> uh, let me know which pattern you would like uh, me to help add to your library of things to create. Um, knitting pattern, crocheting pattern, I mean, whatever, as long as it's 10 US dollars or less, and available on Ravelry, I will gift it to you. Uh, so same rules apply for this next month. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway for this month is leave me a comment down below on this video. The comment can be about anything. Um, and then next month, I will randomly draw a winner from the comments down below. All right, folks, I am starting to get a tickle in my throat. I think I've talked enough for today in this episode. Thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end. I hope that you have a great month of May. Uh, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye, everyone.